Hello Year 10, so today we're going to continue our work on arrays and we're going to jump straight into a problem now. So we've got um, a task for us to have a look at and it reads Julie has collected data on the total money she earned from her paper round for each month of the year. She's writing a program to print these out in a list. So in January she earned £15.10, in February she earned £18.80, in March she earned £16.50, etc. At the start of her so at the start of the program we've got our uh, array month and that holds every month of the year. And she wants to allow the user to input the money earned into an array called money, which has a length of 12, because there's 12 months in the year, there will be 12 amounts. Uh, 12 money amounts stored. Uh, we've got write pseudocode or Python code for inputting the data in Julie's program, prompting the user with statements such as enter the amount earned for January, enter the amount earned for February, etc. And then print the data, giving the month and the amount earned for each month. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to set up a new REPL. Uh, I've called mine Julie's Pocket Money. And we're going to need to have an array holding all the months. So you can see I've got month equals, and then I've got my square brackets, and I've put in all the names of the months. Now, I haven't made these go to a new line. You can see. I just continue to type it and it automatically went to a new line. So don't press enter to go to a new line, just keep typing and it will automatically format that for you. Pause the video now and once you've got this bit done, come back and resume playing. So now that we've got our array all set up, let's have a look at how we can print out all the months in one go. So what I can do is I can print out all the months as a list, but I wanna get each individual one. So to do that, we use our index values, and you can see if I put zero, it'll print January. If I change that to a one, it'll print February. Now I can sit there and I can type all them out, or I can use a bit of iteration, a bit of looping. So I'm going to put print out all the months. And what we say is we say for each month in month print each month. And you'll see here they're all printed out individually. So we can use this now to help with the first task. The first ask says to prompt the user with statements such as enter the amount earned for January, enter the amount earned for February. So what we're going to use here is a bit of concatenation, a bit of concatenation. And we're going to say enter the amount earned in. And then we're going to use our plus to add in each month. So now when I run it, you can see it says enter the amount earned in January, enter the amount earned in February, etc. So we've achieved the first part of this, which is getting the phrase enter the amount earned and then the month. Pause the video now, please. Make sure that code is all set up and working. When that's done, come back and resume playing. So now that the, all the months are being printed out, we're gonna go ahead and get the user to enter in the amount earned. So we're asking them to enter the amount earned in then the month. So we're gonna create a variable called amount earned, and that's gonna be equal to an input. Now we don't need to add a prompt in here because our prompt is this print statement up here. So you can see if I run that, it will say enter the amount earned for January. It's waiting for the user to enter it in. So let's go with £15.50 and you'll see it's then going 
the same for February. And you can see I'm able to enter in all the amounts. One of the things we don't have at the moment is a place where these amounts are getting stored. So if you remember, we were going to create an array called money, and that's going to be a blank array at the moment because there's nothing inside it. But what we want to do is every time the user enters in an amount, we want to append that onto the array money. So we do money dot append and then the amount earned. And notice this is inside the loop now. If I print money, what you'll see is that every time I enter an amount, it gets added to the array. Now if I move this outside of the loop, you'll notice this time it isn't being printed. However, when I get to the end, it will print them all out here. So we've now completed the first part, which is getting the user to enter in the amount for each month and storing that in the array money. Can you please pause the program here and update your code so it looks like this and check that it's working, please. So the final part of this task is to be able to say how much was earned in each month. Now, as we saw before, what I can say is I can say for each month in month, print each month. And what will happen is it will print out all the months individually. I can do the same thing if I say for each amount in money it will print out all of the individual amounts that was in money. The question is, how do I get these two things together? And this is what we're going to be looking at and exploring now. So the first thing that I want to do is be able to use the index values because the payment for January, which is in position zero in month, is going to be stored in position zero of money. So one of the things that we can say is, if we say for I in month, print I, that'll print out this data, so January, February, etc. If I say for I in range length of month, print I, let me show you what that looks like here. You can see it prints the index values, it actually prints the positions of 0 through to 11. If I change this now, if I put month in front of it, what that allows me to do is to still get the months by themselves. So why is this important? Well, let's move this back to its place on line 11. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out each of the different months. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add a, uh, add a comma. I'm going to add a colon. I'm going to add another comma. So this we're doing some concatenation here. And I'm going to do money. And then I'm going to put I in there. So we're going to get the first time this loops, it will start at zero, and it'll go to month zero and money zero, and I'll get the first items. 
and what you'll see is so now I'm being prompted to enter the ID numbers in so I'm just going to enter in some dummy data as we go there we are and you'll see now it's been able to print them side by side so January was 18 February was 54 which is exactly what it was that we entered in so this for loop here rather than us using just for i in range sorry for i in month like we have done on line six by using the range part we're able to actually use the index values which allows us to iterate so to loop through two different arrays at once that would conclude the task we've been able to make sure that the user can enter in the amount and then it prints out the amount next to the appropriate month. Please pause the video now and update your code so it reflects what is here. Now that this is done, please check your code running, make sure it works. If you need help, please go back, read the code carefully and make sure it looks exactly like you've got on screen here. I'm now going to explain your second task for today. On Teams, you have this document. And the first thing is to read all the information carefully. If you want to play about with the code, you can access the array characters here. So by clicking on this link, this will take you to this page. And as you can see on the page here, we already have the array set up and you can type your code underneath this comment on line four. So on line five, you can start typing your code. So let's have a look at the task again. So the first thing is, is to read the information about how an array works. Now the part that you've got here is any code that's in blue can be typed into the ROPL, you've got the link above, to help you get the answer. So if we have a question one, what would be the output if the following code was run? Well, let's go back to our ROPL. And here, if I do print characters zero, you'll see it outputs Homer. So if I change that to be a one, it will give me the answer. Looking back at the rest of the questions then, anything that is in blue, you can type in. So what I would say is read the information carefully, see what's being said. On questions like this, um, it was easier to give you space to type in these boxes to have it this way rather than going across. So it's no difference, you can just type your answer here and you can see your answer goes red. Just put in answer. And again, any bits that are in blue, you can type into the code and it will give you the answer. Just make sure that you start off with the screen looking like this. So every question gets reset to being the original array. Good luck, any questions, you know how to get in touch.